turn my mic up. Boy, yo. Take there. Yeah, yeah, uh. On the road to the riches. Life takes a toll like bridges. Good friends become foes and snitches. Better watch who knows in your business. All right, Hustle Fam, Hustle Fam. We are back with another amazing episode. Now, the brothers who I have on the show today, literally the brothers who I have on the show today, are the team from JK Logics, um, Lansing, Michigan's upper echelon secure transport company. Now, when I say secure transport, that's cold word for cannabis, y'all. That's cold word for cannabis, cannabis transport. All right, this is a, a industry that I am extremely, extremely excited about and I'm, I'm interested in. I think there's a lot of opportunity here. It's a new industry, it's emerging. So I'm really, really interested to learn about it and get the perspective from some guys who are actually doing it. So Corey and Jordan, welcome to Truck and Hustle, guys. Awesome. Thanks for having us. Thank today. you so much for having us. For sure, for sure, for sure. All right, cool. So, so listen, so I know you guys have a lot of history, history in transportation in general, not just secure transport. You guys also have a family company as well, Matrix. Right. So let's kind of get into the, the, the backstory and, and, and talk about how you got into transportation to begin with. Corey, let's start with you. Yeah, well, I mean, actually, with our family company, Jordan being the older brother, he had he had began before I did uh, probably three or four years. Uh, so when he actually started the trucking portion of the family business in the Detroit area, uh, I was still in college, still thinking about what to do. Do I want to work for the family? Is this the path I want to take? Jordan's been more dead set uh, that this is this is his plan. This is his goal. He had the transportation vision uh, off the start. Um, you know, he started literally from the ground up. No trucks, no drivers, no dispatch, nothing. Uh, you know, I think he would do a lot better job explaining it uh, from his perspective <laughs> of what it took or what his vision was uh, from the very get go. Uh, to where we are now, uh, very happy and growing and progressing and, and taking things at the next level. Jordan, get into it. Tell, tell me a little well, bit about I, starting that company. Well, I appreciate those words, Corey. Um, <laughs> but kind of to get into it, I studied business in, in college and no supply chain experience, nothing. And started working with, uh, graduated college 2012, jumped into the family business um, I'm more of the executive operational side compared to the employee side where I was previously. And uh, I was tasked with finding some savings. So trucking was one of our largest expenses at the time. And so I was, you know, pestering, 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 and was just told, you know, here, you figured out, get in a corner, you're, you know, stop bothering me. <laughs> so we got other stuff to do. So that was 2000, that was January, 2012. Um, it was me, we got one truck, we had one driver, me and him did everything, you know, grow from there. The next year we had 10, um, then we're up to multiple locations, 60 trucks, over 150 trailers. Um, and now at the transport side is equal to, if not larger than the other side of the family business was when we started. Uh, so we have really taken it from the ground up on the asset side as a carrier. And that's where we started. And that's where we've found that has actually benefited us once we've got into the brokerage down the road and you get into more of the warehousing distribution, just in time stuff. But as far as the trucking and, and asset base, that's really, really helped us get going on the matrix side and really helped our vision on where we wanted to be which was a total asset based 3PL. And that's the goal at the end of the, at the end of all of this. Fast gotcha. forward to probably 2016, one of my roommates in college went and played in the NFL and came back uh, about four years later and was getting to cannabis. And he was uh, an investor with a company on the growing, cultivating, processing dispensary side, and they needed someone to transport. Uh, insecure transport, according to the licenses, you cannot own, you can't be a totally in a vertically integrated company. You can't own all of them. You have to split the licenses up. 
So the transport license required someone with logistical experience to get that going. They approached us uh, in the beginning, initially said, no, we were you know, too busy with what we had going on. A year later, same thing. That's when we kind of took a more serious look into it and found that, uh, you know, there's people who are entering the secure transport market that are entering it without uh, the, the logistical background and the shipping, the trucking background and how trucking is really done on a, on a re local, regional and over the road, you know, type of platform. More of so, these were the people that were just buying a couple sprinter vans and, and hoping to get calls, but not really, the compliance thing wasn't twisted in there on the security aspect of secure transport. So we took a look at it and, and that's when we came up with the vision that we wanna be the most secure, secure transporter out there, the most technologically advanced secure transporter out there. Because at Matrix, we are a very technologically advanced company, one of the most technologically advanced carriers. We were e ELD compliant, pretty much fully integrated five years before it even was a thing. <laughs> gotcha. so, we, we are very much a tech forward family operated company and that we wanted to transition that focus into JK logics. And with that high end security vision, the full armor, high end proprietary tech, it is really uh, turned out to be probably the best decision we've made from a branding perspective. Um, it's given us a leg up in branding and service and trucking. You're really only as good as your last week of service, if not your last day. Because you can be replaced the next morning. There'll be another carrier in there the next morning, no matter what you do. So if you, you could have a contract for 10 years, and if you have a small string of bad service, you will be replaced. And that's just the world that we live in, and that's trucking. And that, that's really how it comes down to it. So we knew with service, technology, and, and equipment, top-of-the-line equipment, bring all that comes with top-of-the-line team. You know, that attracts the top of the line drivers, top of the line personnel, and allows us to kind of drive where we are forward, which is being Michigan's upper echelon secure transporter. You know, so from a, a quick back kind of overview, that's how we started. And that's kind of where we are today um, as far as the JK Logics vision, which is to be the biggest, best, most secure, and the best service. Service does everything. If you service everyone, the rest will follow. That's a fact. That's a fact. So we, we I, I want to dig deep into JK Logics, but we can't just overlook Matrix, what you've done with that company. Um, you've built a, a very large company. You guys still run that today. What, what, what niche are you guys in for uh, in, your, in your trucking? What, what do you guys do? What do you guys haul? Our niche is automotive. Um, we do just in time warehousing distribution. Um, we do we don't do too much LTL, full truckload automotive, I would say, is our niche. Okay. And uh, we do a lot of uh, drayage. Okay. I would say local automotive, full truckload drayage is our, that's our niche. If I really had to pick one out. Got you. And you, you said you guys do warehousing as well? Yes. Oh yeah. Okay. Okay. Lots of warehousing. We have over a million square feet in Michigan. Awesome. Uh, we, everyone from Daimler to Costco. And everything. Wow. What, what was the key in growing to that size? Like you said, you started from one truck, right? One truck, one driver. How, how did you, and, and how long did it take you to go to that size? You said you started in 2012? 2012. Uh, yeah. Eight years. Yeah. Eight years. Uh, service and integrating the, the contacts and support that you have on the matrix quality side on our, our uh, family business side and taking those relationships, proving our carrier capacity and the, our quality of service on the carrier end, kind of selling, pushing that as one big package. So when we have matrix quality that's doing all of these automotive assemblies and stuff like that for these big customers, well, now we can also do the transportation, the warehousing, the logistics, Im importing, rail, everything. So it kind of that package to a lot of customers is very appealing when we can hold you know, three months of offshore inventory at a time and just in time deliver it, selling more of a complete solution is kind of how we got to where we are today. Got you, were there any like dedicated lanes or anything that kind of propelled your, your business? 
Yes, yes, absolutely. When we first started, it was brokering, right? I would, I would, I would be at the gym after hours of writing, you know, brokerage stuff on a napkin that I could find on the counter to call the lane back. And then you, I used to do road tests at night so that I had time to dispatch and do that stuff during the day. And you brokerage loads, as anyone knows, is a rough deal on the carrier side. If that's all you're running is constant brokerage, 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 brokerage. Right. So it's, it's not something that you can really build on without a good brokerage relationship. So at first we, I remember in 2012, we were all hundred percent brokerage. And then I was in a meeting last week and we were going over contracts and we're a hundred percent contract carrier today. <laughs> Got you. The work that goes from being where that was to now is just a culmination of things from hard, just hard work, sacrifices, and a good team. You just have to have a good team to, to be able to do it basically. Gotcha. And what point did you get into warehousing? We really got into warehousing. The matrix quality side got into a heavy in about 2014, 15. And then matrix transportation kind of took over the warehousing lead 2018, 19. Okay. And that's when gotcha. we got into more of the warehousing technology. Um, I mean, a customer can see in real time from when it's pulled off the truck wherever it goes in the warehouse all the way until it's on their line. So that's when we started really pushing the warehouse technology. Um, and now we're in the process of pushing that even further. Got you. Okay, cool. Let's talk about, let's go back to JK Logics now. Let's talk about the inception of that. You said you started out in 2016. A friend of yours kind of was talking about the space. It was new at that time, right? And you said that a lot of the people who were in the space weren't compliant, right? They, they weren't licensed correctly. Can you talk a little bit about that, what it takes to be licensed correctly and, and, and that compliance piece? Absolutely. The licensing part, when we first, JK Logics first got licensed was uh, through Lara. Now it's through MRA, but it used to be through Lara directly. And it was, it was quite the process. I mean, I, they, you have to turn in every single document, every financial receipt, every ATM withdrawal for, for five years. And it's, it took us over 16 months to get through the licensing process just wow. alone. So uh, back then, a lot of people grossly underestimated that process because you, you still have to float. You still have a lease. You still have employees. You have to have all that stuff through this whole process. And then you get to the end of it. And you would almost think going through that whole process, there's just going to be this gold pot. Well, no, you haven't even fired the engines. You haven't even got started. <laughs> right. So that's kind of where a lot of people, they hear the cannabis thing and they're like, boom, we got to do this. It's going to make money. But there's a lot of work that goes into it. It is still a trucking company at the end of the day. It's just a different service sector. Um, the, uh, the licensing part now, you could get licensed probably in 90 to 120 days if you had all of your ducks in a row and you had your paperwork and you were quite responsive. But the compliance side on the, on the secured transport, there isn't a strict standard now on what type of vehicles you have to run. So you could run a regular sprinter van if you desired with no security measures, et cetera. And then put two people in it and jeans and a t-shirt and technically by law, you can run as a secure transport. Okay. However, at JK, we took a different approach with the upper echelon wanted to be top of the line. And our, our equipment is, is top of the line. I mean, it's, I don't know if Corey has shared any uh, social media or anything with you, but our vans are armored, diamond plated, fully around. There's 360 degree camera vision. Um, they are state of the art. Uh, the drivers that we have ex-US military, we hire all veterans on the driver's side. That has proven greatly. So we really have a very professional service sector. And on the, the state and the compliance side, when they come to do the inspection and you're set up like that and you're secure, your building security is advanced and you, they see that you're pushing to push the limit of what this section is, what this licensee is supposed to do, it's very appealing to them. And it, right. it helps us out on the compliance side now when it comes to our renewals or working with the MRA on certain aspects of compliance on the secured transport side. They know that JK Logics is always trying to push the envelope and trying to be, you know, the best of the best, whether it's through our technology integrated 
with the MRA, with metric, or it's through our equipment being you know fully armored. I think there's only one other person with one armored van. So that's kind of how we want to operate is, is very high, high end. And that is starts with the service. High end service will drive the rest of it through. So far it's proven good and you know we're in a good stage right now, but we're just getting going. Got you. So in order to be licensed, is this just a license solely to transport or is this, uh, what is the license actually saying that you're licensed to do? Yes, the secure transport license is a license to solely transport product to and from a grow to a processor, excuse me, a cultivation to a processor, a processor to a um, dispensary and or a grow rate to a dispensary and anything in between. It has to be from a licensed facility to a licensed facility. You also have to get medically licensed on the medical side before you can get licensed on the adult use recreational side. Once you're medically licensed, you can get your recreational license and then you can move both types of product. Got you. And, and how much do you actually have to know about cannabis to get into this industry? Not too much. <laughs> yeah, not, not a not lot. Too much of, Surprisingly. Not a lot. Not you, a lot. You, you said not a lot, huh, Corey? No, yeah, actually not a ton. Uh, I Maybe on the relationship side, it would help if you had a head start uh, or our product moved around. But with our logistical background, uh, you know, we could have been moving tires and we figured it's somewhat of the same concept. It's just building those relationships. Uh, that has been one of the most important parts, if not the most important part, uh, to getting this thing where it's at. Got you. What What does the space look like, Corey? Especially where you guys are at in Michigan. Like, how how many competitors do you have? Are there a lot of people doing secure transport? Can you give me an idea of the landscape? Yeah, I think like Jordan had mentioned, it's a lot easier now than uh, when it was when we started to get licensed. So we see competitors. Uh, I would say growing by the week, growing by the day. Uh, the, the whole cannabis industry out here is, is growing. We're seeing more cities go rec, uh, more large big game players, if you will, are picking up steam, getting multiple locations, you know, 10, 15, upwards of that number where it's not, it, not small mom and pop shops anymore. Uh, so we're yeah. seeing the competitors, you know, th they're coming at us left and right. They're trying to accomplish the same goal we're trying to accomplish. Uh, and that's where we're relying on our equipment, on our people and our relationships to grow with our customers versus, you know, competing with our competitors. We want our contracts locked down. We want the relationships built. Uh, but yeah, as far as the landscape for secure transport, uh, it's still a doggy dog. Got you. Is there a limit to the licensing, the licenses that are out there available for, um, you know, multiple, like locations to be, to be built? Like how, how does that work in, in the city? Or in the, there, in the isn't, seat, there isn't a cap on transport, but that definitely is a thing in the other license sectors. They are okay. capping a certain amount of licenses per city that you can get. In transport, it hasn't come to that yet. As Corey mentioned, there is a ton of, just in the beginning of this year, there was 12 licensees. There's 24 to 28 transport licensees now. Of those 24 to 28, there's 12 that are or I would say operating more than three days a week. And there's, there's eight that are up that are going at it. And it, it is very much as Corey mentioned, a, a cut throw, uh, similar to trucking. You know, we've, I've experienced, that's all I've known trucking as since I started is there is no other way besides to get it done with the highest, best amount of service, but with the market and, and secure transport being so immature, even in the infancy stages right now, it's, as Corey mentioned, it went from the mom and pop shops who were all licensed to small licensees in the beginning, converted over from more of the caregiver model. And now you're seeing big time corporations. I mean, there's several, several publicly traded Canadian companies involved in the Michigan market. So oh, yeah. it, is, it is, it is for sure growing more on the corporate side. And we're, you know, just as we have, have done so far, planning and, and pushing our logistical solutions with the high end service and the equipment that we can show and guarantee to our clients that this is what's going to get your your stuff transported transported from point A to point B the best, whether it's through climate control, humidity control, 
in the summer, in the winter, you know, there's a lot of factors that go into moving it compared to moving auto parts. Got you. How many dispensaries do you guys uh, deliver to like on a, on a daily basis, on a weekly basis? Can you tell me some of those, uh, some of those numbers? Uh, 115 plus. Wow. On a 115 weekly. plus on a weekly basis. Yes. Got you. Yes. Got you. So, Last so when you did 210. Wow. Wow. And, and what, and what's your asset size right now, just to get an idea of what it takes to actually uh, make the, make that many deliveries on a weekly basis. Right now we have five vans. Okay. Five vans that we operate. We have, uh, we'll have six next week and uh, just keep growing from there steady, but surely, but our logistical background and the team that we have our t the team that we have is incredible and they have been able to do a lot more with a lot less equipment than the standard, what I would believe with the standard licensee would be able to do. Um, our operation, Cameron, who was going to join us today, he, he, has, uh, he has changed the game in secure transport as far as I'm concerned um, from where we've started to where we are today. I mean, his relationships that he's, that he's grown, the team that he has helped put together, um, there, there's no one that I would probably pick to, to go against him right now. And him, he and them have every week they're innovating on how they're doing it. They're, they're doing less with more. The, the vans are really, really able, the capacity of the vans that we've built is, has also helped separate us from, from what we're, from our competition is, is one thing that has been a, a significant thing along with our technology. And Corey actually could probably speak more to Cameron and, and the team involved uh, and how we, how we kind of got here with that team over the past 24 months, they've, they've done some incredible things. Yeah. Let's, let's talk about that. Corey, talk to me about the operation, the day-to-day -day, kind of how things work. How do things look at JK logics on a daily basis? Yeah. So I think, uh, you know, it start every day right at the shop, uh, headquarters there in Lansing that you get the team together. They know the day before what the next day is going to portray as obviously, as you know, in the trucking game, it's, it's always changing. It's ever changing as far as what the manifest says, but our team's aware of what the next day is going to look like. The team gets there, Cameron, uh, and the people under him are there running the show. They get the manifest, they get the product, our totes, whatever we, whatever we have on site that needs to go out, that's what's loaded in the vans. You take the manifest, we check into our statewide system, uh, and then we hit the road and we knock it out. And obviously our dispatching is involved in everything like that. So it's the team communicating from the second we all walk in the door uh, from the time everyone gets back, all five bands. Got you. Now, is the cannabis, is it on pallets? Like, how, how, do, you, how do you guys deliver this stuff? How does it work? Totes. 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 Boxes. Yeah. They're... Yeah, different size totes. Yeah. Yeah, there, there is no one-way packaging, if you will. Uh, but, yeah, we haven't seen palletized quite yet. You okay, so nice. pizza boxes. Pizza boxes? In the beginning, people would package a wax product in, in, yeah, in pizza boxes. So, so there's no real standard. It's kind of like whatever you could put it on, just put it on here and come get it. <laughs> in, yes. In the beginning, it was very much like that. It's starting to standardize out a little bit. As Corey mentioned, they put packed boxes in, in these totes and uh, big plastic totes, as you, as you would will. And that's how they stack the vans uh, because you have to zip time. A lot of security measures go into place. Um, and everything is crazy marked individually. So it, it is no, definitely not a set standardized packaging at this time. Definitely not pallets. That will be nice when we get there though. <laughs> Got you. So, I mean, how is like the stuff separated? Cause I know there's like different strands and, 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 and all these different types of cannabis. Like if, if you see, have a van load full of green, how do you know what's what? <laughs> That's all. It's all, everything's barcoded. Good, 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 uh, Jordan, or Corey, whoever wants to take that one. Good, Corey, everything's barcoded and um, separated that way based on what it is. And each customer kind of has their own, uh, will have their own logo and breakdown on their sheet. That's kind of how you keep it separated in the van um, and, and, and legally, right? Just a, a manifest insecure transport is a bill of lading, proof of delivery. 
it's, it's the same thing. So you're checking your proof of delivery and your bill of lading against what was actually loaded, making sure the barcode numbers match. And we have developed our own technology um, to assist us in that process, which has been nice. Got you. So you guys, when you guys start in the morning, you guys are going to pick up from a location and then you're going, and then you're delivering out to all the different dispensaries. That's how it works. Correct. We either pick up at a different location or we might already have it in our vault from the day before that we had a, picked up at night and we will be up in the morning. Every van is loaded up and dispatched out deliveries and pickups. They might pick up something that day that delivers the next day that they bring back to the facility. That's how it's working right now. Okay. Got you. Now you talked about this, this van that you guys, it's, it's totally specced out. Um, talk about that. That's a custom van. I'm, I'm, I'm assuming you guys had to get that custom built. Yes. Custom built van, fully armored, um, built in Toronto. The dually diesel high capacity uh, also has a capacity for humidity control, temperature control, uh, cash movement um, safes, it, Camera 360, camera vision inside, outside. Uh, it's connected to some pretty good technology that gives some uh, trans transparency to those who need it if, if it should be stopped uh, for any sort of thing. So that is really, uh, I'm trying to think of the right word of the right word for it, but that and the, on the spec side of the van, the van on the is is very top of the line. I'm gonna have to send you some info on the van so you can see some pictures. <laughs> but it's no sprinter van. <laughs> yeah. Got got you. Can, can you guys like talk about like some of the costs associated with kind of building out a van like that? Like what what would that cost? Yes, a brand new van built out fully is seventy five thousand. Seventy five thousand. Uh, okay. That and that's a uh, chassis with with probably. A, couple thousand miles on it and then they run it through their line and they physically remove everything and physically put all everything back together and, and uh, do your add-ons. We add on the um, humidity control, excuse me, we add on the temperature control, we add some camera views and we also add some MVR recording to it. Those are add-ons that typically probably around 2,500 a piece. You can get one for 62, 65 ish out, out the door, plus those add ons. Um, and we've really found that our equipment in the beginning of this, before we had any business, we would take our equipment to our meetings with us so that we could show the potential clients what we were talking about. And it, it, uh, yeah, it, it, our equipment alone has gotten us some business in the beginning because of how impressed some of the clientele was with it right off the bat. How long does that take to build, to build out? From order to finish, 13 to 16 weeks. Okay, okay, got gotcha. you. That's about right, right, Corey? 13 to 16 weeks, yeah. Yeah. Okay, yeah. And, and how did you guys know to go, you know, so uh, in depth with, with, with the van? I mean, like you said, there's other people who weren't going as far as you guys were. What made you take it to that next level? And how did you know what to do with the van to totally spec it out like that? Oh, that was uh, actually a lot of that credit goes to Cameron on his market research side. Uh, he, he was doing a lot of market research based on what people were doing in other states, California, Colorado. Um, and, and it was really clients wanted the secure transporter to actually be a secure transporter, not just be someone who shows up in a sprinter van, because essentially you could just call any trucking company to send a sprinter van. And technically that should take care of our transportation, but right, to actually right. be a secure transporter and, and do it on a very good level um, is something that he said that people weren't really doing. They were more just jumping into the industry to try to take advantage of the product that was being moved. And we wanted to bring the approach to Michigan that it, we are very serious about secure transport and we're very serious about the secure word in that. And it has proved to be to, to be fruitful in, in the relationships that he's been able to build um, just with that. And people take people appreciate it because they put a lot of work into getting to where they are today on the cultivation and processing side. And when someone shows up to move their stuff in a professional manner and everyone works together professionally as opposed to not, 
uh, it makes them, you know, that warm and fuzzy feeling. That's what everyone wants. <laughs> no, absolutely. Let, talk, let's talk about the economics a little bit. Like how, when you guys first got started in the industry in 2016, coming into a new and emerging market, how do you guys know what rates to charge? How do you guys know how to bill your customers? How did you figure that out? Well, that's a funny story. Um, we had no clue what to charge, what rates to charge. And we were being asked by the company that was basically bringing us in to exclusively do this for them, what we were going to charge them. And we didn't know at the time what we were going to charge them. Um, and I didn't know any other way than to benchmark. So I posed as a cultivator and called some transporters and we got our pricing. And then <laughs> from there, it, it gave us a benchmark on who, how people were pricing, what price points they were using and allowed us to, to get competitive in certain areas. Um, and has, that has also been beneficial, the way Cameron has structured our pricing. Um, he's worked on that diligently to make sure we're altering it or keeping it competitive. And people in every market are different. Um, customers in the cannabis market are much different than customers in the automotive market. Um, automotive is, you know, get, you know, now, 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 today, now, doesn't matter the quality, just get this thing here. Where right. getting this, people want their stuff taken care of. They put a lot of time and effort into it and they want it taken care of. And that's, that's understanding those personalities that has really reaped us benefits on, on, the, on the rate side. And then from there, it's just building that service level. Once we get in once, whether we have to give them a cheap deal or not, they can see our service and that's where we go. Got you. Are you charging your customers per like stop? Is it like wait? Like how, how, how does it work? Yeah, just per stop. Per stop. Okay. One, one, one number. That's it. Okay. Stop. We don't get into fuel surcharge or anything like that. Got you. Can, are you able to give us an idea, not an exact specific number, but around what you would charge for that service? Per stop, we would, we would charge hundred plus okay per, per stop is what it would be at and obviously gotcha. mileage amount of stops in that area gotcha. comes into factor but that's that's about what you could you could expect and that doesn't matter number of boxes uh one to ten that stuff doesn't come into play um we don't run into too much detention um that's not really an issue yet in the industry detention um we don't do fuel surcharge. The fuel on, on Sprinter vans isn't, isn't like that too much where we need to do that yet. Right. Um, but, you know, one thing we are starting to get into is cross docking. That's, that's one thing we want to get into uh, heavily in 2021. Mm. Uh, and that's having, picking up packages, bringing them all in, as you know, what cross docking is. Yep. And, you know, lining them up, putting them on the van to go out the next day. So that's something that we want to get into. And there, that would be, so say you have 25 packages in one shipment, you would charge $25 for a shipment to cross. Got you. To give you got a, you, got a, you. Okay, cool. Appreciate that. Thank you for sharing that. Um, give me a crazy story, man. Give me a crazy cannabis delivery story that you guys could talk about. I know that you guys must have adventures every day in this, in this space. G give me something that the audience would find interesting. Crazy one. I don't know. I wish Cameron was here for this one. He would probably <laughs> a good one. He, we'll have to get Cameron on. Yeah, we'll have to get Cameron on. Um, I mean, as far as it, crazy uh, danger type thing, I, I, I think fortunately we haven't run into that yet. Uh, though it's nice. I think our guys are prepared if we do. Um, but as far as, uh, you know, what what lengths are we willing to go to get the job done? I mean, we just, uh, I believe it, within the last two weeks, last week, uh, you know, we had one late call delivery at 9 p.m. to go to Marquette from our headquarters in Lansing. Well, uh, you know, it's 10 plus hour drive. Um, so, you know, you know, two of our most trusted drivers uh, hopped in and, and made it, I think, I believe just before the bridge on the way up and finished the job in the morning in two feet of snow and did a quick turnaround, uh, grabbed some product on the way back in Traverse City uh, and got the job done. I think as, as far as crazy, uh, yes. crazy service maybe right now, <laughs> but we don't have anything, 
the that's thing, a great thing as far as uh, uh, guys are doing that all the time with uh, crazy ser services nuts right now. Those stories are. I'm glad Corey brought that up because those are our guys are doing that. I mean, Christmas Eve, New Year's Eve, it's Saturday, Sunday. Today. There's, there's, yeah, today the, the people want their product in the stores because that's when it sells, right? So, you know, it, it takes a team of, of great individuals to finish your shift and get back and still have hours of service to be able to jump in the van and get some more stuff done. And it's Friday night and you haven't seen your family all week and to still have no problem jumping in there and getting it done. So the hours right now, those are the crazy stories. Right. So these, these dispensaries are basically just run out of product and they'll call you guys like, Hey, we need, we need this ASAP as soon as you can get it. And you guys got to run to go get it. Yes. Yes. Or, <laughs> or the customer who makes the product will say, Hey, I know that we have this amount of inventory in this store and I know they sell way more than this on the weekends. I don't want to lose sales on a weekend and it's Friday at 7 PM and he wants us to come pick up more of his stuff and take it to one of the stores that he sells out of. So, you know, it, yeah. it goes both of those ways, but yeah, they don't, they, they want it Thursday, Wednesdays, Thursdays, and Fridays are crazy. Gotcha. But it's fun, right? It's, if you like logistics and you like, get, you know, that type of stuff and it, it it's, a, it's a great, it's a, it's a great puzzle every day. That's for sure. Got you. Got you. What are your plans as far as like, in terms of scaling your business? Like how, how large do you guys plan to grow this thing? Uh, we would like to scale it as, as large as we can in the next three to five years, multi-state. We would like to be in at least two to three other states uh, with as much, as many pieces of, of equipment needed to satisfy our customers and, and continue to grow and grow and grow. Now, I think the next two to three years will really kind of tell how the market's going to be. There was an article released yesterday on the new administration their uh, secretary of, I, I, I drawn a blank, but the, she wants marijuana federally sold through federal government stores. So there's, there's some, which, which uh, would be crazy if that, that yeah. came out. I don't know what would happen. So there's a lot of unknowns on how the market's going to go in the next, you know, 12 to 36 months. But Got you. ideally we, they, we would, if this goes federally legal and uh, we can kind of then at that point begin a matrix model almost on JK logics where we would be to the point where we would need some 48 foot trailers. Uh, we've already gotten some requests for those straight trucks, semis, warehouses, you name it, full, full distribution and trucking model across. Wow. The what, what do you guys do to keep up with the news and, and, and legislation? How, how do you keep, uh, like stay tapped into the industry? What, what resources do you use? Legislation side, our attorney. <laughs> the, <laughs> okay. But the, <laughs> the other news and stuff, Corey can bring that part up better probably. He handles all of that and uh, does a very good job making sure we're on track in or ahead of the curves that are coming. So he can, he can speak more of the market news and how we handle that. Yeah, good, Corey. Yeah, I think as far as... Uh, the news for, for the market. And obviously we, we tend to focus on the state of Michigan. We, we do keep track of obviously the, at the federal level, but what's going on around us and our headquarters city and the cities that our customers uh, have the heaviest presence is just staying on top of it. You know, it's a lot of time behind the scenes, uh, finding the right websites, you know, cannabis news, Forbes actually is fantastic as far as, uh, you know, portraying economically and good market analysis on, on what we can see uh, you know, 2020, I don't think a lot of people knew what was going to happen. And it turned out to be, uh, for the most part, very successful. Um, so it's, it's staying on top of that. It's uh, subscribing to your newsletters, just being in touch with even at the local level governments, you know, any news that might be happening, staying on top of new customers, new dispensaries, and anything like that. I mean, you, you just got to spend time because uh, there's news every day. It's just if you know where to find it. Right, right. You said cannabisnews.com? Is that, is that the- Yeah, there, there, and I can provide a list. Yeah, there's, there's cannabis, uh, cannabis connect. Uh, uh, you know, before COVID, Cannabis Connect was hosting events in multiple cities throughout the state. 
when we really started with a van or two, uh, myself and Jordan, myself and Cameron, we'd be going to these events just to network. Uh, and we still have some of those customers today. Um, Got you. And Forbes was a great overall market analysis. But yeah, uh, in your local newspaper, like the, you know, the Lansing Times, Metro Detroit News, the Grand Rapids Press, every uh, large city or metro city has uh, some sort of cannabis section in their news department, obviously, if, this, if it's legal within your state, um, where if you just type in cannabis or marijuana, it could be laws or secure transport or dispensaries opening near me. That information's all available right there. Got you. How, how has COVID, COVID impacted you guys' business? Um, it, it's not, it has not impacted secure transport market in Michigan. In fact, our governor deemed it an essential business. Mm. Uh, we had not, we, the cannabis market in Michigan is up over 700% since March 23rd when we first on the, on the uh, non-essential business side started experiencing shutdowns from the governor. So it's, it's actually, it has gone up. It has wow. gone up, which is wow. just crazy. And I almost feel guilty saying that because of other people out there and what have they've experienced in their lives. But it, the cannabis market in Michigan since COVID started uh, has, has gone up, has, has risen significantly. In the beginning in April, when the first round of, of stimulus checks came out, it, you were seeing crazy rockets in the sales. Yeah. People need a little bit of cannabis to cope, I guess. <laughs> right, a little bit of co coping mechanism, right? Yeah, for sure. Yeah. For sure. So, so, so for someone who wanted to get into this space, I know in Jersey, you know, where I'm at in Jersey, they just recently um, passed a law to where, you know, you can have dispensaries and so forth and so on. Where, where would you start if you wanted to get into this space? What would you start looking at? What type of research would you suggest people do? What, 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 what advice would you offer? The, the best I would, advice I could offer is do your research in your local government areas. Um, each government in Michigan, we have LARA. I'm sure New Jersey, you have LARA, which is licensed, uh, licensed agency and regulatory, regulatory affairs. Um, each state has their own individual spin of that. Um, start there and then drill down um, and, and what license you're trying to get in secure transport. What are the requirements? What are the license fees, not only for your state, but what are the license fees in your municipality? And then what are the renewal fees, right? So a lot, a lot of people don't uh, get as far as checking what the renewal fee is. And then they spend a year setting up and spending all this money and realize they got another six figure renewal coming up. And, uh, you know, that will set you back if you don't plan accordingly. Um, get a, a advice from a good local attorney who has brought someone in that license group from start to finish in the licensing process and do as much research before you go full bore as you can. That would be the best advice I can. Um, and get, try to get someone, I, I wouldn't recommend going into it without any sort of logistical experience. So if it's something that you really want to do, bring someone in with you who has the logistical experience and can help you sell solutions instead of just a one service shop. Gotcha. You talked about the renewal, the renewal fees. What's, what's going to be your, your around what's, what's your startup costs look like potentially for, for those licensing. To start a secure transporter, just with medic on the medical side. 500. 500. 500,000. And that will get, gotcha. uh, that's with probably a van, two operators, all your licensing fees, your, you know, your first year's rent, stuff like that goes into it in, into that number. But I would say you could start a solid secure transporter with that with one piece of equipment there and go from there. What about insurance? Insurance on the secure transport side actually isn't ridiculously off the charts as some might expect because we never take full ownership of the product. So we don't actually own, sell, or create the cannabis product itself, where their insurance, I'm sure, and I know is, is much more than ours. Um, but the cargo insurance, vehicle insurance, all of that is, is your standard trucking uh, insurance, your standard trucking policy. Um, nothing really changes there besides your carrier. Uh, you have to have an accredited carrier within your state. But uh, the policy on like our vault, where we do our 90 
hours of storage or cross docking and hold stuff over there is uh, is excessively more about 40k a year um, than what it would be just on standard building insurance. So the vault, that's something that's external. That's not something you guys have. Somebody else has the vault and that's where you we have our own that? vault actually okay. within our facility, within our headquarters. Um, we were able to, to find a facility, thankfully, that had one. And that is also proven to be, you know, not, not everyone has, has that, especially, I mean, the size of ours is quite large as well compared to a master bedroom. Um, okay. So it's quite, quite big. And, and that we have to have special insurance on because we're allowed by the state to hold product in there for X amount of hours and then we can redistribute it, right? So if we pick it up on a Tuesday and it's going to Iron Mountain, Michigan, which is like 18 hours away, well, then we're going to, you know, plan for something when we have going up there within that 90 hour allotment. So we would hold it in our vault. That insurance policy is a little bit more than your, your standard uh property building insurance would be, but everything else for us is, is pretty standard. Um, but you definitely have to use an accredited carrier. Otherwise it won't be. Got you. And you said pretty much the setup is just like setting up a trucking company. You guys have to have MC number. How, how does that work? We actually have a CVID number with the state of Michigan uh, police. Um, and that is a transport number with a sticker that comes that you put on your vehicles. Uh, we, we do not uh, meet the weight requirements and our vehicles do not meet the weight requirements to have to register DOT. We will, towards the end of this year, uh, register DOT. And at that point, yeah, we will run a standard uh, US DOT and MC number. Got you. So you said that's a CVID. Is that something that's across the country or is that just uh, particular to uh, Michigan? That alone is particular to Michigan. Um, other states that require a secure transport license uh, have their own version of that. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Got you. So just check with your, with your local, uh, uh, municipalities and so forth and so on. Yep. Check with your Lara organizations. They can point exactly what, um, tags you'll need to put on your vehicles, what to register them as, and they can point you in, in any direction that you can go. Your local website will also give you a plethora of information, more than days worth of research that you could do that will also, kind of step-by-step step walk you through what you should do as your as your uh to get licensed nowadays there's a lot more in those um municipality and statewide websites as far as questions and that people have asked before um that people will be able to get the answers to the questions they're looking for got you now you said earlier um you mentioned about the technology that you guys have um as far as how you run your operation can you speak to that that's something like an intellectual property that you you came up with and is that something that you're going to uh give to other carriers as well or is that something that's going to be specifically for jk logics no absolutely i can speak to that it's um bolt box is the name of the technology we've created uh we're in the final uh beta stages of of that software and that is that kind of was created based on our experience in trucking to date um, on, on the matrix end. And it is specific to the cannabis secure transporters at this point in time. And we're, our goal is to build that out to dynamite performance and service. And then yes, we will make it available to other secure transporters within Michigan. We are um, the only ones integrated with metric um, on that platform within our state. And we are just now uh, kind of flowering that relationship with metric to make it even better to where our customers will be able to place an order with probably 10% of the effort that they're having to do now. So we've got a couple of testers that we've been running. All of our customers have the, you know, the usual real time transparency, um, all the good stuff is in there. I'm really excited to get that launched and we'll get you a, a login here for yourself soon. Got you. So that so that's called Bolt Box. Bolt Box Technologies, yes. And so so you're able to as a as a customer, you're able to see like where the where the you're able to place your order, obviously, and then kind of track your order. Is that how it works? Yep, you're able to place your order. Um, which right now, when you're a customer to place an order, you'll find a secure transporter, and then you have to come up with a whole route, send it to the transporter. The transporter has to send their route back to you, and then you have to upload it into Metric just to get your certified state BOL, Bill of Lading, which is considered a manifest. What Boltbox does is allow the customer to just jump onto our customer portal and enter their shipment and it will automatically send it to metric and everything will be done on that back end side for them. And it will just send them their manifest 
and then send the transport of their manifest, essentially cutting out an hour or two per order, probably an hour per order of, of labor for them having to get it all routed and, and do all that on their side. Um, Boltbox should help them do that. And then we'll also provide them the transparency they need to prepare for their shipment to arrive and or for the van to pick up their shipment that they've scheduled to pick up. Not only that, but it will provide them a financial history of how much, how, you know, each order. They can see every order they've placed, the paperwork, the signed manifests that come with that order, the invoice if they've been invoiced, um, pretty much a whole customer portal tool for them to see how they, you know, what JK Logic has done for them to place an order or a, a accounting. It can assist everybody, um, especially on the secured transporter side, because in the beginning, it's if you don't have much logistical experience, it can prove to be difficult to keep track of everything and then also at the same time maintain good service for your customers. Got you. And what and what's metric you said about uploading to metric? Metric is the statewide monitoring system. So each state metric is in multiple states, um, but each state has their own uh, monitoring system. Most of them use metric, but that tracks tracks, excuse me, a plant from seed to sale pretty much. So when a cultivator plants a plant that plant gets a metric tag, which is which is uh, then entered into the state system. So the state can track the contents of that plant all the way through until someone consumes it. That way, if there's a recall or if there's any sort of issue with it, the state could track back to where that, that originated. Oh, wow. That's interesting. Yeah. I know. It's, I didn't, <laughs> uh, it, it, you learn something new every hour, not even every day. That's for sure. That's that's really interesting. So it has a whole lifespan, the life cycle of that plant from yes. the time it grows to yep. consumption. And if there's wow. some, if along the way that goes to a processor to get turned into a cartridge or a cookie or some sort of other product byproduct outside of the cannabis flower itself, that will then get a, another step tag. So they will track that from back to that so that there's no loss of. Um, tracking where that came from in case anything is, is comes out negative. Wow. That's interesting. But in, in terms of building your business, when you're, you, you're outreaching to, to new customers and so forth and so on, um, how, how does that work? Like when a new customer kind of gets their license or whatever, do they reach out to you? Or are you reaching out to them? How does that process work when you, when there's a new grower or a new dispensary rather, not a grower, I'm sorry. A, di a dispensary, they, they would probably be reaching out to several secure transporters as they're opening. Um, and depending on if it's their first one or if it's their hundredth, if it's their first one, they're literally probably jumping on Google because there's not much education on who, you know, who's available for, to do each thing that you need them to do in your business. Um, literally, probably we've got calls from people who just found us on Google. We've had calls from people who opened a dispensary and down the road, um, someone told them they use JK logics. We, you know, so there's, there's a lot of different ways that people are finding us, but one thing, um, we, we are doing is trying to find them first. Got you. Now, it, now this is by, by law, like they, they can't move this stuff without a secure transport, correct? They, there's no correct. way around it. Correct. Okay. Got you. So this has to be in their business plan. Like, okay, we have to find a secure transporter, mm -hmm. so forth and so on. Yes. Yes. So on the cultivation side, um, it's not much of not in the business plan as much because they could find one as as they need it. But definitely in the in the dispensary side, um, if your person you're purchasing your product from isn't supplying the is the transporter, then you're going to have to find a transporter. Got you, got you, got you. Okay, cool, man. I, I love it. Is, is, there any, is there any other questions or anything that I, that I should have asked you guys? Anything else you want to share about the industry? Because I'm really in, because there's so much I don't know. And I've been doing like oh, yeah. a little bit of research about secure transport and about the industry itself. Like what, what, like anything new on the horizon that people should look out for that, that I may be missing that, that you'd want to just share? You, you hit some great questions. Um, I would say that there, the next year or two, you're going to see a lot of states, if not federal, uh, legalization of, of cannabis. You're going to see a lot of large corporations get involved um, that may have either been involved backdoor previously 
uh, so they weren't identified or or are not involved at all at this point. But you're going to see a, a large push from more of the, um, you know, and I love everyone, but more of the hippies, how people view cannabis stereotype to big corporations. Uh, it's it's going to be it's going to be a a massive market here very soon, and to expect secure transport to eventually operate as trucking does. Got you. When, when you guys, because I, I know there's like a, dis, you got to distinguish between the, the, the medical, um, like, like some, like, okay, like for example, DC, there's, there's medical. Well, I'm not sure exactly how it works. I think you can, you could, they sell mar they sell uh, cannabis, but they like, they'll, they'll let you buy something and then they give you the cannabis for free. Like what, what's all that about? Do you, can you explain that to me? Cause I, I don't get it. And that's that's a new one. I have I haven't heard that. But if we can go to a store and, and Target and we're buying stuff and they're giving out cannabis, that's yeah, a new it, it, it's like almost like they're not allowed to sell the cannabis, so they'll give you like a trinket, but the cannabis comes with it for free. Like you 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 ever heard about that? No, yeah, no, it, I have not. But that I yeah, don't. that's not here. <laughs> but it's I don't it's like a, it's, it's like, like it's they like, found a loophole. It's it's a loophole. That's exactly what it is. It's like you're, they're not allowed yeah, to sell it. Yeah. So so they basically it's like you buy a cup or a coffee mug and it's like here here's some cannabis, but the coffee mug costs like a hundred yeah. bucks. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think it was. That's like uh, that's like that jeweler during COVID. He was, I think he was in Detroit. Maybe he was putting soup cans on his shelves next to the watches. So he told the government he was selling food. So we got to stay open, <laughs> innovative, it's innovative. No, that's, that's I extremely that, smart. People find those loopholes to sell it all the time. Yeah. Every loophole. Yeah. And that's really uh, from a government standpoint, um, the state of Michigan legalized cannabis from the people voted on it. And it, you know, they do have a year technically to develop legislation to bring it to market, but it took them all of a year and then some to, to develop legislation because those type of loopholes and there's still there's still plenty of loopholes in the system i'm sure that people will exploit and are going to continue to exploit um but that's why it's easier from a legislation standpoint if the states and or federal government just start preparing for what's going to happen it, it will be there will be a lot less loopholes otherwise they're, you're going to see i mean people selling people will be selling it in subway sandwiches you'll be able to get a cookie you know, right. People are going to do what they have to do. So it's easier just to make the legislation now and get it over with and let's, and let's go then, you know, go in that route. But yeah, got you. It, it, for a second. as a business who's already established, is, is that kind of like a fear of yours, like the lack of regulation in the industry? Um, not so much a fear as it is, uh, I, I, yes, it gives me some anxiety, definitely, because of the laws. They'll change the laws on a Tuesday morning at 9 a.m. and then they'll be changed again Thursday by lunch. So it's definitely something that if you are on top of the legislation, uh, you could get caught in a gray area pretty quick. Got you. Got you. And and where and where can you uh, go to f uh, keep up with the legislation piece? I know we were talking about earlier, like cannabis news and stuff like that. That'll kind of cover all that, right? Uh, the, the news will cover it greatly and even better will be your local or your statewide government website we have in Michigan here, MRA.com. They do a pretty good job at releasing the latest bulletins that come out, whether it's legislation or it's per municipality bulletins um, or anything in between. You can really find your latest and greatest updates from your government there. Awesome, awesome, awesome. All right, guys, we've, we've been talking for an hour. I really appreciate you guys sharing so much value on this on this topic um we want to close out before we close we have to get <clears throat> excuse me we have to get your final thoughts i always get a final thought from my guests so i'll give each of you an opportunity to get a, a final thought on just you know entrepreneurship or whatever you want to kind of leave the audience with and then after that let's let everybody know where they can connect with you guys and where they can find out more about jk logics <clears throat> so let's let's start with you jordan yeah uh well go ahead corey go ahead corey you could start with your final thought <clears throat> okay. Uh, yeah, I think uh, as far as entrepreneurship goes, you know, where JK Logics is today, there, we don't have a secret sauce, right? We, we invest in our equipment, we invest in our people, uh, and we invest in our process, and, and we, we take care of the customer first. So it's just more of a, you know, a nose to the dirt, 
grinding it out every day. Uh, besides our employees, I don't think we have anything unique that anyone else can't do, um, but, but it's our people. Our people drive our processes and in the end, the results speak for themselves. And in such a tight knit community, such as the Michigan cannabis community, uh, you know, word travels fast and effort goes a long way. So I think uh, surround yourself with good people, uh, invest in your people, invest in your equipment, uh, and the rest will take care of itself. I love that. I love that. Jordan. My final thoughts. Uh, first of all, I appreciate you having us on here, but entrepreneurship um, <clears throat> in today's world, that hasn't changed besides the event. Use technology, um, work hard and, and be innovative and don't don't ever uh, do the same thing you did the last time you made a mistake. If you're not growing, you're dying. So that's our mentality every single day um, with whatever I do. Um, it's you're either getting better or you're not. You're uh, and staying the same is just you're just getting stale and dying. So don't be afraid to take chances. Don't be afraid to let it change your life if it is a good chance that comes out. And if it doesn't work out get right back up and get, and get, get going. No, no one's going to sit here and uh, feel sorry for you. You, you are controlling your own destiny. So, you know, there's no, the American dream is working hard. That's what the American dream is. The American dream is not waking up and having everything handed to you. You're going to have to work for what you want. And, and that hasn't changed. It's not going to change. So, you know, you can, you can, if you're in the cannabis market in Michigan and you need a secure transporter, Give JK Logics a call. We're in, Lans we're in Lansing, Michigan. You can find us at jklogics.com on Instagram at jklogics. Um, we keep up with news on our social media pages. We post news. Uh, we post job opportunities. Everything's on there that you can see. Uh, we appreciate your time today. Thanks for having us on. Jordan, Corey, thank you so much, guys. You, you gave us a ton of value, a ton of information. <clears throat> like I said, this is a space that I'm very, very interested in interested in. I think it's a new space that people should definitely look into, um, take it seriously and, 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 and see if there's an opportunity for them there. And thank you so much for sharing, you know, you guys experience so far. Definitely. Thank you. Thanks for having us on. All right. Hustle fam. If you smell yeah, something burning, we appreciate it. Thank you very much for having us on. No doubt. Hustle fam. If you smell something burning, it's only your desire. We are out. If you twisted, confused, or stuck about trucks, don't be dumb. This is the place to come. Truck and